welcome to the Six Again podcast, your new destination for all things NRL. Here to bring you everything from team news to best bets are your hosts, Adam Hoy and Jared Mutant. Let's kick off. This episode of Six Again is brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped is the world leader in below-the-waist grooming for men. Head to manscaped.com and use the code word AGAIN, A-G-A-I-N, to receive 20% off plus free shipping. That's AGAIN, A-G-A-I-N, at manscaped.com. Hi, and welcome into the Six Again podcast. Uh, We're starting tonight's episode on a rather somber note uh, with the passing of Masada Yusefa earlier this week in a quad biking accident up near Darwin. Uh, Masada was just shy of his 33rd birthday, played NRL for both the Penrith Panthers and West Tigers and also his native Samoa. Um, There's been a number of messages posted on Twitter, reaching out to his family and expressing their condolences. Players such as Wade Graham, who he debuted with, Keith Galloway, um, and a really touching piece from Frank Pritchard. So we just want to offer our condolences from 6 Again podcast to Masada's family and hope that you get through this um, the best you can. Thanks. Yes. From 6 Again, wish you all the best. And yeah. Okay. So moving on to the content tonight. Um, Adam. Um, should we introduce ourselves to start with? Oh, yeah, possibly. I'm Jared, and that is Adam. I'm Adam. Hello. Adam's had a very rough day. Yesterday was, or was it today? Today was your real first oh, day back. First day of teaching for the year. Yeah. For and the, overall, for the it was pretty good. Yeah. Um, so, but obviously, it's always rough day, the first day. Oof. Always, uh, always, you know, after having 12 weeks of holiday, I think it was. I'll oh, get out of it. <laughs> and come back to work for the first day, you know, considering most of us only had like four or five days off over the break, whatever. Okay. Okay. More days than I. So, <laughs> what beer are you drinking tonight, Adam? Uh, tonight, I actually had one of these earlier in the week as a taster, and it was really tasty, so I went and got some more. So, this is Strata Hazy IPA by our friends from Ballistic Beer Co. down in Brisbane. Uh, very solid brewery down there, always doing good things. Um, and they've also released a West Coast IPA in this series as well, which I've yet to taste, but... Yeah, that's what I'm going to be cracking for tonight's episode and been looking quite forward to this this afternoon. Yeah, 12, um, week, 12 weeks off and one day of work will do that. Okay, so moving on, the injuries this week, there's only been really one. That's Adam. We've, we're putting this on YouTube. That was inappropriate. Um, he, he gave me a very not nice hand gesture for people who don't watch this on YouTube. So the only injury that's come out in the last week or so since I think it was last Thursday when we did our last podcast, was Mitchell Pierce has broken his thumb. Um, so we will have to wait on the um, results of that, but they reckon he's back for round one. Yeah, he's even targeting the February 27 trial if it all goes well. He's getting a pin inserted in the thumb, so it's not a, it's not a crazy procedure by any means, but definitely an inconvenience for... Him and the Knights, um, knowing that he's now going to miss training while that yeah. heals. Okay. And that's all pretty much the injury news. Okay. Yep. Which is right. which is not as bad as what we had last week, considering we had two Achilles injuries last week. Um, next one is the news. So, finally, it's put to rest. Well, not 100% put to rest. It's rumoured that Benji Marshall signed with South Sydney. So... Yes. Um, I don't exactly understand it considering uh, what is it two weeks ago we went through how much depth they do have um, they have one of the best kickers in the world and one of the most explosive plays in Broken Field and Tony Walker and Adam Reynolds so I'm very surprised of this but look he's an experienced player been around the, the group could you know be pretty positive for him not everyone involved um but yeah, so in other news... Um... Oh, wait on. I want to talk about that too. Oh, Jeez, come sorry. on. Sorry. What, what, do you, what, do you, what do you want to say about that? Oh, I just... I would have hated for him to go out of the game if he didn't get a lifeline, the way that everything finished last year. Uh, obviously, the fairy tale would have been 
finishing with the West Tigers. Everyone knows about it. Ra 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 ra. He'd said he wanted to play on. He's worked with Wayne Bennett in the past at the Broncos and also with New Zealand. And Bennett so, really rates his no, it wasn't no, no. Yeah. Um, Really rates his leadership and mentorship skills. Now, in this off-season, Sharks and Cowboys both expressed interest, but Bork got the price tag. Uh, Hull SC contacted him from the Super League, but he wanted to stay in Sydney. So it's going to be interesting to see what sort of money he's going to be on at Souths uh, and where how North Queensland and the Sharks may react if he goes on there way less than he was asking for with them. So obviously he's going to provide depth to Reynolds and Walker. And just reading up on this, over the past four seasons... How many games combined have Reynolds and Walker missed for South? Oh, I want to say 10. Oh, that's pretty good. 12 games. Yeah, it, it wouldn't have, I don't imagine it'd be much. Especially when that's it's ridiculous. Combined. Like, I understand that Reynolds and Walker get injured individually, but yeah. Um, but, you know, they've got that's... a few young halves. I'm pretty sure, I think. Troy Dargan and Dean yeah. Hawkins. They're the next two in line. Yeah, so. But and you'd expect you Cody Walker Mitchell. to miss time around Origin. I don't. I hope not. Um, you know, you got Troy Mitchell who play six in a pinch. Um, you got to, yeah. I, I was, I was surprised by this. Um, I, I imagine if we came up with a bit of a list of places Benji could go to, I don't think South Sydney would have been on it. No, probably but, not. As Adam said, the leadership, the mentorship, the calming influence he could bring it, and you know, Origin time. If Cody Walker does play, there's a chance Adam Reynolds could play Origin as well. He's a pretty quality halfback. I doubt it. They'll lose Gay Guy. They may lose Mitchell. Yeah, they'll so lose bringing Arrow. in someone who's played over 300 games in one grand final yeah. and 19, like, why not? And, um, yeah, and then that way, if it's going to be his last year, crowds hopefully will be back to normal and all that sort of stuff. It'll be a better way for him to go out. Um, 324 appearances. Yeah. Okay. Just those couple of things. I think it's a good fit when you look below the surface. All right. Um, all right. So moving back to Newcastle. So obviously with the scandal that broke out, what was it three, four weeks ago? With Mitchell three Pierce, weeks ago, yeah. Um, he has stood down as captain, whether that was his choice, whether they'll push, whatever. Newcastle came out and named a five-man leadership group. So they have not named a captain, but it's named a five-man leadership group. And that involved, and the five men are um, Caelan Ponga, Barnett, Daniel Safidi, Blake Green, and Jaden Braley. Yeah, we definitely mentioned that last week. Did we? Yeah, that thing about it. I think so. Okay, well, either way, they're the five. I'm not happy with it. But if I mentioned it last week, I would have went on to a bit of a rant about it, so I'll leave it alone. <laughs> I think they've still said they're going to be naming a captain. Um, yeah, they, they will name that a captain. Um, I, I Actually, one of the news that came out, Clemmer wasn't named, which everyone expected, but everyone was expecting him to be. But Brian O'Brien came out and said that he doesn't need a label, he already is a leader. Which is a bit mystifying to me. It's a bit weird. Um, and I don't Unless agree he's getting the ultimate label. <laughs> um, I don't agree with Ponga being captain, Safidi being captain. He's not, they're leadership group. I know, but one of them's gonna be captain. I don't I don't agree with most of them. Green and Braley have played four games between them. Um they're not, yeah. Like Safidi's just coming into his prime as a front row. You don't need to stick that label on him. And that kind of just leaves Barnett, which is like how you're yep. a little bit. So, hey, yeah. we're not there every day. There's got to be something to it. Yeah, that's right. Uh, You've got to hope Adam O'Brien knows what he's doing. Sticking on Newcastle, before the texting scandal came out with Pierce, he was actually negotiating for a new contract with the Knights. Both he and the Knights want him to stay there past his 2021 deal. However, that plus his thumb surgery, they've reopened talks again, but the word is that they're both going to have an impact, whether it's on the length of the deal or the numbers, but it looks as though he'll be taking a cut uh, compared to what was first offered by the look of it. Um, there was an original multi-million dollar four-year deal still looming, but I 
would see that coming down because that's quite a long Four years. period of Jesus. time. No, 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 that's the, sorry, that's the end of what this one is. It's not going to ah, be the same size extension. Four years. Um, it's 32 already. Wow. Yeah, so that's going to be an interesting thing to keep an eye on, see how much money he's cost himself there. Okay, so the next bit of news is um, it's actually been a not slow week, but a bit of a small week in news. So Corey Norman and James Seguiaro have um, been in We're involved in an altercation. Altercation. So um, not they, with each other. No. So they were, supposedly they were walking down the road. Um, people approached them. There was threatening of knives being pulled out and some um, racist comments allegedly. Um, they've released a statement through their brand, you know the rules, YKTR. Um, Which you can find on some Insta app. So yeah, so that's all um, kind of, I think they did the right thing. If what happened was true, Corey Norman went to the Dragons the next day, Integrity Unit for the first time on this planet, knew about it before the media did, which is like a unicorn in rugby league world. Um, so they're, they're already on top of it. Um, I think you, you know a bit more than th about this one, Adam. Do you? you um, I'm just 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 going off the just going off the statement that the boys released on yeah their platform. Looks as though they're walking home after a dinner with two females. They're approached by a group of four men, one of whom began racially abusing Chico, uh, calling him the N-word, so referring to Seguiaro. Yeah, that's An argument ensued, Seguiaro. Yeah, and Corey came in to defuse the situation. He was blindsided and a fight broke out. It had all but broken up when one of the others threatened to pull a knife. Um, and then the rest goes on to say, as individuals we stand against racism, um, other, sometimes it's as simple as resharing a post. Other times it means defending yourself. So, if if that proves to be the the true uh, story out of this, you can. It's definitely believable. We we've mm -hmm. seen how NRL players are treated in the public at times, especially if people have something against people with color, whether people have had too much to drink, whether they're a supporter of another team. Yes. They'll roll players up just because they know that the they'll get a hit out of it. Um, I hope it's that version of the story. And I hope that those four others are dealt with as they should be. Obviously, there will be another side that comes out. That's how law works. So this is all we've got to go off. We're saying we're hoping this is a true one. We don't have any other further information um, about it. So... The off-season of NRL drama continues. Yeah. Okay, so Adam has actually has some positive news about the World Cup. Which yeah. Is, yeah, so this is... Um, I want to say it first. Good I didn't news. even think he'd even get this far. But yeah, keep going. So, yeah, obviously the World Cup hasn't been fully approved yet. Uh, it's in the UK. Vaccines are... Are available to members of society in the UK. So who knows what the situation is going to be like in October when this is meant to run. However, they are planning as if it is going to run. And part of that means getting TV deals and TV rights set in stone. So out of the UK, the BBC has committed to televising all 61 games from the men's, the women's and the wheelchair rugby league world cups. That's huge to get that locked in this early. That's the host broadcasters. Now the next stage is looking to secure broadcasters in Australia and New Zealand. Now, usually this would kind of be as straightforward as your Fox Sports and probably your Channel 9. However, with streaming services now available almost everywhere, uh, Rugby Union having just signed a three-year deal with Stan, which is owned by Channel 9, throws a spanner in the works. So you've got Amazon Prime is an option. Their Stan is an option in partnership with Channel 9. I know some people might wrinkle their nose at, oh, I've got to get a streaming service and all this sort of stuff to be able to watch League. And that is an issue. I know what that's like with regards to not having pay TV and having pay TV with regards to watching certain sports. The upside is the more competition there is, the more money that's going to be available for Rugby League. And it'll go to the World Cup first, but then it'll be spread out. So... 
the free to air broad broadcaster nine will be in the pole position. You'd expect the Australian games to be live. You'd expect the New Zealand games to be live on Sky Sports, I would assume, out of New Zealand. However, all the other games, um, I think they're going to be up for grabs. And again, the more competition, the better. Amazon Prime, for instance, purchased the rights to stream New Zealand cricket. So when New Zealand is a uh, into India till 2025. So you imagine how much that's worth streaming live cricket into India uh, when they're playing away. That would be huge. So this is going to be really interesting over the next couple of days, weeks to see who is going to get the rights in Australia. I wouldn't be surprised to see even seven or well, 10 jump in. It, um, it's not so much the rights because they'd have to pay. Oh, sorry. Surely there's a there's a stipulation in the contract saying, okay, we'll give you this bunch of money to get the rights, but you, you know, no, they're you selling to, the rights. Yeah, so you, yeah, so as the buyer, that have to put stipulations about COVID in there. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what is interesting, and because those stipulations or that thought process is already there, um, are they going to? lower the price for that reason so it's it'd be like adam said it'd be really interesting this couple of weeks because yes we're happy the world cup's going to happen well at this point it's happening mm -hmm. but That's how is saying. it going to get brought in is there going to be as many teams as usual because rugby league world cup isn't exactly the there'll be more on the world stage as is because of compared to soccer and rugby union but will there be you know, as many teams because Adam said there'd be more, which was already scheduled because a lot of more teams are allowed in it. But you know, are teams with highly affected COVID areas going to be even allowed into England? Like England, yeah. Uh, so no. in the in the women's tournament, you've got teams from Brazil, Jamaica, and Greece that have qualified for the first time. Awesome. So that's already going to be a bigger international audience than rugby league's ever had. And so they're looking at the biggest global audience in the game's history for some of these games, which would be amazing. Uh, remembering Channel 7 got the last two World Rugby League World Cups in Australia. Um, yeah, this is going to be some awesome competition to watch. The optimism here is not till October and vaccines have been rolled out in the UK. It's just whether A, the vaccine's proved to work over a period of time. Um, there's no extra strands of COVID and people are still following the lockdown rules, rules when they need to. And we know that's not always happening. So good news with regards to the World Cup, more money in the game overalls, good for everybody. Yeah, okay. So next step guys is actually, we're bringing in a third person to play a bit of a game show between Adam and the third person. And that'll be next. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back. So we've got our special guest, Little Robert. He's about two foot nothing. He's played lock for Palmer's Rugby League for about 15 years, coming from Nambour Crushers. Um, hey, Robert. Hey, cheers. <laughs> I think I'm only about two foot six though, so cheers. You're about, uh, yeah, no, sorry. Um, so yeah, at, Robert's been a good mate of ours for about 10, 10 years. Went to high school with him. He once put me in a pin. So... Um, good times back in the day. Okay, sure so, <laughs> so, brought Robert on tonight to do a bit of a game. And it's going to be a rugby league version of who wants to be a millionaire. So I've got, oh 11, I've got 11 questions here. But the key is to this game is that it's not about how many questions you get right. So whoever goes That's good. first, whoever goes first, if they get the question right, they move on to the second question. They keep getting it right, they win the game right to the end. They get The questions get harder and harder as they keep going. If you get a question wrong, that means the other person gets to step in. So, also, you get one 50-50 option. So, all the questions are multiple choice. For that reason, you can say 50-50, I'll take out two wrong answers, and then you've got 50-50 to get it right. If you what if we both wrong, get it wrong? Well, you're only, no, it doesn't matter if you both get it wrong. I'll both get it wrong. Sorry, yeah. we flip a talk, flip a call. I choose who gets to go next on 
pure dumbass where he's answers questions. Okay? Sweet. So that, that means he didn't plan for this outcome. So they can't <laughs> be that hard. Is that okay. surprising to you? Adam? So because no. Rob is a Bronco supporter and, a and they couldn't win a race against the fat kid last year, I'm going to let him go first and have the best track of going. <laughs> Okay. Oh, this is go. an all-inclusive podcast, Jared. <laughs> all-inclusive. Oh, uh, yes. I'm handicapable. Well, do you know what? I'm fat, so that works. Okay? You ask anybody. <laughs> okay. All right. So, first question for this is, and this is specifically aimed at Robert for a great memory of his. When Ben Hunt dropped the ball in a 2015 grand final, who picked the ball up and tried to run it after? A, Adam Blair. Two, Sam Friday, for A two C or A B C Corey Parker or D Jared Wallace. I don't know. Everything after that moment is just a blur of tears. Um, <laughs> it seems like something Adam Blair would do. Adam Blair, you are incorrect. We we're, were all at that game, weren't we? Yeah. 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 Adam, I you want to jump in there and see if you can get it right? Um. I'm going Sam Thiday. That is correct. That wasn't one of the options. Yes. What? It was. That, that was that was the one C B option. That was the two. See, that's where I got confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's the part you got confused. It was the blue option. Okay. Oh, yes. here. So Adam Adam's got the lead here. All right. Not number surprising. two. I, I just seem to remember Sam Thiday going. What? Yeah, he, he kind of didn't got do anything and stepped a little bit and then ducked yeah. into it like Try to bump someone off. The referees is like, "Come on, man! What? Why? Why?" Uh, there's your teammates, a your drops, teammates crying on the ground. The there, ground. Yeah. I'm crying. That's just the last memory of that game. Okay. Here and I are surrounded by Bronco supporters, and we're like, <laughs> "No, do yeah. you know what? The the cool thing about that game is because we went to about five games, five grand finals in a row before that, and that was a game where." There wasn't as much hate towards the other team. Like everyone's no, kind of happy. I went to the um. Was it the quarterfinal they were both in, or the semi? Yeah, yeah. I went to that as well. Yeah, and great everyone, games to watch. Like if even the Broncos lose. fans were depressed about losing. They're like, okay, at least it's the. Who Kings cares? It was there. Cowboys. Yeah, that's, that's the second option. <laughs> okay, Adam, sticking with the 2015 NRL Grand Final. Who passed the ball to Kyle Felt for the final try? A. Jonathan Thurston. B. Lachlan Coote. C. Michael Morgan. Or D. Justin O'Neill. Um. Ah, <laughs> uh, Michael Morgan. That is correct. So John he got outside. Milford yep. got outside Jack Reed, one hand. Oh, yeah. no, Jack Reed and Anthony Milford making bad defensive reads. You wouldn't hear about it. Well, um, no, Milford didn't make a bad read. He just got burnt for speed. Reed made the bad read. <laughs> Which he was supposed to be the best defensive in the NRL. And, uh, the I didn't play any NRL at that point. That's a, the one part of that game that made no sense is Jack Reed scored one of the Broncos' tries. Yeah, but that was a runaway try, though. You know, I know, but. Fu- Funny, a couple of years. I remember ago, he got up and went. So <laughs> it, was, it was funny. A couple of years ago, we went to what was it Kieran's Bucks party, mm. and Adam had a training day at actual Red Hill. So he actually went into the Red Hill Broncos training base for the day. I went next door to the club to the um, sports bar, the bar, and got hammered the entire day at Broncos sports club. While I was getting run around on the hot oval by Mick Devere yeah, and Jack and Reed. Yeah, I was sitting on the yeah. bar watching Adam go to run around in a circle drinking. But they have mm-hmm. a big screen in the Broncos League Club. I was there from, what, 9 to about 3 o'clock. They, yeah, what, okay. they played that game twice in that period. I don't know why. On the big screen, they played... Like a train crash. You just can't look, look away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just That's the culture it. we want to... Remember it. <laughs> the culture you want to build. Okay. Oh. Adam, according to official NRL weights, who is the third heaviest player in the NRL currently? Third heaviest. Yeah. A, I only know the... Mm. A, Junior Paulo. B, Thomas Burgess. C, Daniel Saifidi. D, Junior Paulo. That's twice. Okay. You said the same guy twice. <laughs> D, 
<laughs> I wonder. Day J- Daily Cherry Evans. <laughs> Only because he's neck. Okay, yeah. so I'm, guessing, I'm guessing it's either going to be A, B, or C. Yeah, or D. It could be D as well. Third Am I allowed to ask questions? No. Nah. Oh. Rude. So if I went the 50-50 option here, would it actually be a 60, a 33.33% 33. uh, 33. option? 33.33 option, yeah. Burgess, Paulo, and Saifidi. Who's the third heaviest? How would you be? I'm going to go Saifidi. All right. So <laughs> Junior Paulo is the heaviest? Number one, yep, yeah, definitely. Yeah. He, he's Jules. a big. His chest is bigger than a Robert. Um, yes, his legs are bigger than me. <laughs> yeah, he's. He, you yeah. know what? The shit thing about him, he can move too. Like he yeah, can, that's unfair. Yeah, it is ridiculous. Okay, so now we're up to the fourth question. Adam's on a bit of a roll. Woo! I'm going to. This was always happening. Not not just because Adam wins. This one, he's got 15 seconds to answer. Oh, so it's going to throw that rule in. I love thing. it. Here we go. Okay. This is like so, the NRL offseason. Here's a new rule. Here's a new rule. <laughs> None of them make sense. Okay. <laughs> okay. Which player is undefeated at Suncorp Stadium at NRL level? A, Cameron Munster. B, Jesse Bromwich. C, Luke Keary. Or D, Jack Wyden. Starting the timer now. Yeah. Five, four. Three. I got my answer. Do I have to say it before the countdown? No, uh, you're all good. What is it? Uh, Jesse Bromwich. Bloody hell, you're on a roll. Yes, Jesse Bromwich has never been defeated at Suncorp Stadium oh. in the so NRL. New Zealand's played there twice. Oh, yeah. I was even thinking of internationals. Whoops. I was even thinking <laughs> of just NRL. I was thinking State of Origins, internationals. Oh, foof. Okay. That's a loader. Oh, yeah. Jack White lost there last year. We were there. Yeah, that's right. Luke Keery has lost there once. Jesse ah. Bromwich, and Cameron Monster has only lost there, has lost there once as well. So I only thought of the Munster origin. I didn't even think of him losing for the Storm. Huh, weird. I could have yeah. been a complete dick and put like 20-year-olds who debuted last year, played the Broncos once. I thought you were going to say freaking like Scott Minto. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next question. 15 seconds again. Which... Which team has never won a wooden spoon, but has won three in the under twenties? And the countdown starts now. Oh, sorry. A West Tigers, B St George Illawarra, C New Zealand Warriors, D Manly. Is this St George Illawarra or St George? St George or Illawarra. Illawarra. So all four Sorry, of these teams... Oh, post-merger, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, post-merger. So all okay. four of those teams have never won the wooden spoon. Tell me, who is it? But have won three in the uh, under-20s. So you're saying the Warriors have never got the wooden spoon in the NRL? No. Hmm. Manly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> our under twenty sucked. Except for that two years where we, were, <laughs> except for the two years we had Trebojevic. <laughs> yeah, just unfairly bullying everyone. <laughs> they made it to that grand final on the Broncos Cowboys Day and got slaughtered by Penrith. All right, now you're down to thirteen seconds for every answer. Just for all the Parramatta fans out there, uh, Manly and Parramatta came in in the same year. I'm pretty sure you've got, like, eight wooden spoons. <laughs> They've got the most wooden spoons in any, any team. Yeah. All right. Name this player. I premierships Manly have. Name this player. Born on 10th of July, 1983. Height, 183 centimetres. Debut 2002 for a now defunct club. Played 303 games. Played for City Origin, New South Wales, Australia, Prime Minister's 13. The options are Anthony Watmo, Nathan Hindmarsh, Bray Finasta, and Justin Hodges. Timing starts now. You, you're right there, buddy. 
Yeah. Who was the second and third options? Uh, Hyde Marsh and the Nafta. Uh, what Mokes? He debuted for Northern Eagles. Correct. And Hindmarth debuted for Eels and never played anywhere else. Hodges is a Queenslander. Um, and who was the other Master. one? Master. Braith. Oh, he debuted for, I don't know, Roosters or? Braith, Bulldogs. Bulldogs. Yeah, right. cool. Now you're down to 10 seconds. Oh my wrong. god! So, so if Rob comes in now, he's only got ten seconds, right? No, it's only it gets worse and worse Wouldn't the more you get here. right. So he goes That's up to I mean. fifteen seconds. If you get on a run, the advantage is against you, but you still get the chance to get them right. So when Rob comes in, you've got fifteen seconds. So don't get anything oh. wrong moving forward. All right, fifteen Have seconds you? won't help me. <laughs> <laughs> got Rayman over here. <laughs> Oh, mate, you should try playing this as well. I got my ass kicked last time. Okay. Mm. In mm -hmm. the year 2000, who did Terry Hill transfer from and to where? Did he transfer from Manly to Bulldogs? South Sydney to Eastern Suburbs? Manly to Tigers? Or West Tigers to Manly? And your, time, your 10 seconds timer starts now. Oh, do you want to do your 50 50? C, Manly to West Tigers. Fucking rain, man. <laughs> he did play for all four of those clubs, by the way. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But I was in year seven then, so I was just actually starting to pay attention. And I'm like, I hate this guy, <laughs> Terry Hill, because he plays for the Tigers in New South Wales. I hadn't, didn't really know then that he'd been a Manly legend already. Okay. Next question. Who played... He's speaking all manly Broncos questions. It's making <laughs> it easier. Who played and who also won the 1975 New South Wales Rugby League Grand Final? <laughs> so you have to pick who played in it and who won out of those ones. Okay? So you got Parramatta versus Bulldogs with Parramatta winning. Uh, you just phone a friend and call Hazard. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Parramatta. I'm thinking. Versus Bulldogs with Parramatta winning. St. George versus Eastern Suburbs. Eastern Suburbs winning. Manly versus Balmain and Balmain winning. 1975 New South Wales Rugby League Grand Final. Those East you... and Dragons with East winning because Langland's lost in his Grand Final. <laughs> What do you, do you do? You have like a life outside this. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> what the, how would you know that? Like who? Who? who I would. Bloody hell! Well, well, I knew it wasn't manly. That made it easy. Um, yeah, but you got Parramatta with dogs. That was strong back then. That was the eighties. <laughs> All right, now you're down to seven seconds. Oh my god! <laughs> okay, in the history of. NRL, ARL, Super League, which team has scored the second most points in the season? Newcastle, Broncos, <laughs> Bulldogs, or Parramatta? And you have to pick the year. Oh, what? <laughs> no, get no, out of it. Pick, pick the team. All right, you got seven um, seconds. I'll go my 50-50 on that one. All right. Um... That's literally a... Yeah. That's not Bulldogs, even a stat people know. Bulldogs and Parramatta are both incorrect answers. So you left with... Newcastle oh, good. I was going to go Bulldogs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got seven seconds. Newcastle or Broncos? Newcastle. You are incorrect. Oh, damn okay. it. Okay. So, the boys. Rob... Rob's got the last two questions. And he can oh. win the entire game. This is some bullshit. <laughs> he can win the, the entire end. game. Okay, so the next question, and you've got 15 seconds to answer. <laughs> He's still got I... one 50 50 <laughs> left. So, you know, it's, it's like a four, it's like an 800 meter race. You can't just win the entire way. You got to oh, hold the ball. Yeah, well, that's true. Okay. <laughs> So, 
Which which team has scored the most field goals in any one season? A. St George. B. Manly. C. South Sydney. Or D. Western Suburbs. You got fifteen seconds, Sutton. Do you want your fifty fifty? I do recommend you D? take it. What? what was D? Western Suburbs. What was D? Western Suburbs. Yeah, I'll take the fifty fifty. You take the fifty fifty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll take out South Sydney and Western Suburbs. So you got to pick between St. George and Manly. St. George. Adam knows. <laughs> Adam knows. Adam knows. It's Manly. In 1970, sure. they scored 41 field goals. Did Gerg Inglis's two-point field goals count? Well, that's that's the point. They were worth two or three points back then. All right, Adam, this is going to be the hardest question in the entire thing. You've got five seconds. If you don't get it in the five seconds, Rob can take over. Okay? So we're one of the few people who would be able to answer this question. What do you reckon? How nervous are you, Adam? Oh, you, you're on mute again. You're on mute. You muted yourself. Okay, so, Adam, this is the hardest question. We're one of the few uh -huh. people in the world to get it. What is the street name and name of the Palmwoods Rugby League home field? So, you got to name the street name and the actual name that's on the, on the front of it. Uh, Jack Briggs Oval. What's the street name, Adam? Is that the same? Oh, it's um five, four, Old three, Palmwoods Road. Two. Incorrect. Incorrect. Rob. Rob. I'm Jack Briggs I, I, Oval I, I, on Jubilee Drive. Oh. Pretty sure Adam hasn't seen it in about four years, and I drove there on Thursday for training. So. All right. So you're both <laughs> fucking wrong. What? You're both wrong. That's some bullshit. You're both wrong. I'm pretty, I was pretty sure I was looking for a house on that road. It's old <laughs> Armwoods Road, isn't it? No, it's Cubley Drive and Briggs Park. Oh, where'd the uh, jack come uh, from? Yeah, I don't know where the jack came from at all. Damn it! <laughs> Fuck you, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jared wins. No, I got one tiebreaker question. So, how to get this way? Uh, yes. Rob's three incorrect answers to Adam's 12 correct <laughs> answers. <laughs> well, that's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> that's how this game works. Welcome to adulthood. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> how this part's going to work for the tiebreaker. I'm going to ask a question. It's going to have no answer to it. It's going to be a Jared-centric question. So it's gonna, not going to have multiple choice. He's making this shit up as he goes, eh? No. 100%. Adam, 100%. Adam, you've got to yell at Manly. For you are Todd Green Day. Right. Rob's got to yell at shit cunts for Broncos. Oh, don't, don't <laughs> say Pretty that. sure we're not allowed to say that on the podcast. It's frowned upon. <laughs> say Broncos for your butter. <laughs> the same okay. thing, just a different language. <laughs> okay. So the question is, if you get it right, you win the entire game. The winner gets a certain prize, okay? I don't want the prize, I don't think. Yeah, the way no, that I'm you just said that. <laughs> <laughs> How many games did Kalen Ponga play for Cowboys? Bronco. Manly. Manly? How many? Six. Incorrect. Eight. I'm going to give it to Rob because he was closer. Oh, uh, nine. Something nine. Oh, nine. well, I had six and the answer's nine. That adds up to something pretty cool. <laughs> and you got up me. You got up me. I didn't okay. say anything out loud. So six Adam plus got, nine. Adam got six. The next generation. Adam got every question right. Rob got nothing right, but Rob's the winner. <laughs> Welcome to the game. Welcome to adulthood, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Doesn't get any better from here. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I've actually already got prizes for this. It's actually going to be pretty cool. So, according to Jared, I'm Penrith Panthers of 2020. 
I get everything right, get there and lose. But I'm not actually, any, but I'm not actually any good. <laughs> okay, so it doesn't matter. Last question is what matters. Okay, so the prize for this actually is pretty cool. This year, for the first time since 2016 or 17, Newcastle are playing Broncos at Suncorp Stadium. Ooh. And I've got tickets to the game. Oh, the winner doesn't have to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I Rob, we don't you force me to go. <laughs> <laughs> So I think I've got free tickets. Um, I do have to warn you that my partner is coming Oof. and her family, but the free tickets are available. The entire family that plays soccer is coming to the rugby league game. That makes sense. No, no, I need the ones who like league. That's fine. Don't worry about that. Oh, okay. Um, so all three of you, all three of us are going to the game. We might even do a bit of a live stream night at oh, the game. Oh, wow. So we've got tickets. Right. Does that sound pretty good? At, and just so everyone It'll knows, Adam didn't know anything about tonight. 80 minutes of Rob crying. <laughs> um, do we have a lift down there? Yeah, we've got a place to stay as well. Oh my oh. gosh, that's a one in a million for me. Yeah, so we, we're all good to go. Um, I can't remember what date it is, but we will tee it up and we'll do a Adam, live show. I'll ask your wife, you ask mine. We'll get permission. <laughs> Sounds good. I like it. <laughs> I think um, it's already called Battle of the Spoon. We'll see. <laughs> right on, Manly. Tom Trevoy is just one hamstring away from dying again. Um, we had no one last year. Yeah, exactly, because they're all tore the hamstring. But we still didn't come last. <laughs> we, still we know. We know. We, <laughs> we know which car parks I hang out with paper bags and money <laughs> to not come last. That's all right. All right. Whatever. What are we up to? Six premierships and one wooden spoon? I'm okay with that. No, you're only on five premierships, sweetheart. Calm down. Um, uh, Alright, I'll always try to slip an extra one in there. I, I have no... I wouldn't know. I count 97, about. doesn't count. Um, what do you mean? 97 doesn't count. Why? You money-hungry grubs. You went over to Super League to win that. And you won what that. Who are you game. in? What? You didn't win anything. I did. I won 97 in the ARL Premiership. I didn't win the Super League Grand Final, which is now a defunct competition. Oh, no. 97 didn't count because it wasn't a full comp. I still don't count. Broncos winning anything. So last year doesn't count? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you guys weren't a full team last year. Okay. So that was the prize for tonight. Um, Rob did beat the shit out of Adam at the end. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Well, one very specific question. <laughs> You're like the perfect CEO. correct. <laughs> You're like the perfect CEO who's already worked his way to the top, does nothing for like the whole day of work, and then makes a big decision at the end. I haven't uh, tried anyone yet or claimed credit. So, <laughs> love it. All right. Um, yeah, that's that, that was all I got. Adam, you got anything else? Well done, Jared. Okay. Um, do you want to stick around for the rest, Robbo? Sure, man. What okay. So. We haven't talked about Preston Campbell's return. Oh, so yeah. it came out this week that Preston Campbell, not playing, is returning to the Titans as a... Uh, it's not, not an ambassador role, it's the wrong term. He's taking on work in a number of areas in admin and performance. Um, maybe a bit of a coincidence that his son Jaden has, re has received a developmental deal with the Titans just weeks <laughs> ago. Um, He's what, 16? But, 15? He's, he's 43. Like but... No, not Preston. Oh, his son. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> well, how um, big is Preston? 16 son? stone, maybe. Like, I don't know. Like, I haven't seen his um, yeah, it'd be interesting his measurements. I'm not going to say he's massive. No, nah, but... I wouldn't put money on that one. About a one Rob tall. I don't know. It, it, it's it's weird be that... Than Junior Polo. It could be. Mm. It, it's weird to think... Well, I don't know if it's weird. It's probably not a great look for the Titans, but they came in in 2007. So they're in their 14th season. And when I hear the word Titans, Preston Campbell's still one of the top three that come to mind. Yeah. It shows nice. the impact he had then and how highly regarded he was in the game. Then the Indigenous All-Stars that he got, that he not got behind, that he was almost, the, was the originator of. Well, the, the other side of that. 
Yeah. The other side of that is the Titans haven't really done anything in those 13 to 14 years to make us think of other players. The no. fact that he's still for, I, I still think, when I think Titans, just off the top of my head, I still think LaFranchi, Matt Rogers, Preston Campbell. Yeah, Rogers um, and Campbell. Yeah, right that sort of stuff. So there's no better ex-player to have around the club. And the fact that Justin Holbrook is already changing that club for the better and they looked a lot more professional, it, it can only be a positive uh, for the Titans. He's one of those players that I don't think ever had an enemy in his whole career, no. regardless of who he played for. But and, also one of those players that everything he had was like pure, just his talent. It's not something you can really train. No. It was just, so well, he's, yeah, he's a great person to have around your club and stuff, but is he just a lucky charm? Can he rub off any of that skill? Because none of that's really taught. That's just Preston being a freak of nature. Imagine, I, imagine him uh, one on one for a few hours at AJ Brimson. Just yeah. what he could teach him. Like Brimson's what, what so you, talented as is. Yeah. Oof. What do you see in this situation? What is your plan A? What's your plan B? So you could be looking at kick returns when he played fullback. If your plan A, uh, what's your plan A? Open side, cool. What if they shut that down? Are you going to take the tackle? Are still going to try and get meters on the blind side? What's the go-to play from there? Whatever it is, that sort of stuff. But I also think, while I agree with you there, Rob, you can't teach instinct. Yeah. You can teach for someone of For someone of that size, to be able to survive in the NRL as long as he did at that size, you have to look after your body and you have to be really professional with your training. I think that's the sort of stuff as well that he'll bring to the club and even just having him around he's one of the players i'd still probably fanboy over if i saw um and as a 32 year old that's kind of weird to say there's not many players oh, that you're holding that, that highest team we were come, that's, we that's were what going. i mean like, that's what i mean like you can still fanboy at 32 i'm 28 20 28 soon anyway yeah yeah if i saw andrew johns oh mate yeah, but I mean, the list gets smaller as you get older. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. if I saw Sam Thide, I know offense to Sam, I've met him a couple of times. But if I met him for the first time now, it wouldn't be, it'd be like, oh, there's Sam Thide. That's cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, whereas Preston, I'm like, holy crap, that's Preston Campbell. We got to get a photo. What would, you do you, what, what would you do if you had a conversation with Steve Menzies about it? I'd act all cool, uh, <laughs> like, I did on, like I did in the car this afternoon. Um, <laughs> My Keep that on the down low. Like <laughs> so that, that's all. That's all good news for the Titans there. And I guess the last key point um, is we mentioned last week or the week before that the NRL is going to be looking at a, a few things with regards to player movements. They've officially stated that in the first half of the season they'll be sitting down with the RLPA to really nut out things like trade windows, free agency periods, etc., oh, etc. Et uh huh. Which is going to be really cool. They're also aware that it can't work like it does in professional sports in the States because the amount of money our players are on can't really support a family upping and moving for a six-month period if they get traded for the second half of the season. Yeah, It'll be the player going by themselves. If they're getting traded for a whole year, maybe. But if the player's only on $80,000, you'd be at better hope the NRL's paying the, tra the transport and the moving costs because that's going to cost a hell of a lot. If you, especially if you're moving in a contract. <laughs> yes. So I love the fact that they're sitting down and talking about it. I'd prefer them to talk about it mid-season, off-season, to get it right the first time rather than throw it in place and to make changes as they go along. Yeah. What do you reckon, Rob? Yeah. You haven't had to... They'll, they'll find out a lot of issues stuff. very quickly, like they did with the, every time they bring in a new rule. Within the first month, the issues nine times out of ten get brought up by fans or players or players association goes yeah you've stuffed up here and they dig the heels and go no we haven't we're all right we know what we're doing and then fold a month later do you still think that'll go ahead with um abdo and flannies on one side and newton on the other side because they seem to have done pretty well negotiating so far and yeah. especially in probably the hardest time for the NRL. Let's take rule yeah, changes out of it, but I'm looking at big issues. Came out of it, and there was they were under 
the most pressure the NRL's faced since Super League, if not more then. But you're throwing in all those rule changes and talking about it in the season. Yeah, I... We've, yeah, I think people know my opinion on most of the rule changes. I agree with you there. <laughs> uh, with regards to entertainment, if we're looking at this sort of stuff from a fan's point of view, so Jared and I have talked about this a little bit, would you be a fan of things like at the end of a season, there's a three-month trade period or a, sorry, a three-month free agency period. So instead of a player at your club in 2021 signing for the year 2020 two or 2023 for another club already um and then they play for you and then they leave or would you prefer them to play out then they've got that three month period to sign off um so we don't have these players so i'm I'm not saying yeah opposition teams that they've signed for yes um i think with any blanket rule like that you come up to issues like what happens if you know a star player is not getting the game time he wants They've signed a player and they're not really utilising him. They want to switch positions or not let him play to mm-hmm. his you know, way. How do you protect the player and the team at the same time? Either way, so there's going to be a downside. I that would like, be a trade, I would yeah. say. Like, yeah, Harry Grant and... Which, at a, at Rob's perspective, do you have Because Harry Grant played every game. Momorowski played, what, two? Yeah. So Tiger's got... Minus the fact that Harry Grant played, but they got nothing coming back to them this year. That's right. And, um, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, Harry Grant's from the Storm. Yes. Storm have just gained all this extra knowledge and game fitness, not fitness. um, Management, strategy. Yeah, all this extra experience and skill for basically free. Yeah. Or not free, but. You get the idea. They've sort of gone, well, here you go. Can you train Harry a little bit better for us? Have fun. If you look at it from the other side, though, West Tiger's got Harry Grant for a year. Um, turn into an origin player and the exposure that West Tiger's got from that and the fans coming, even just to watch oh, for that yeah. season, it may not pay off on the field, Harry's but off the, the field. Line in West Colours. Yes. That was insane. But, and he's not going to be an unpopular player from West Tigers fans because but on top of he that, was a chip in the middle. On top mm. of that, it's going to put more pressure on their local product than Jacob Liddell because they've got an expectation of what a hooker should be playing like yeah. and Jacob Good. Liddell's not going to be able to step up to that. Yeah, well, yet. Good try. Up, I guess. But, um... uh, I think if... I like your point there. Trades generally happen... I'm using other sports for an example here. They generally happen in the lead up to finals where a team's like, we're pretty close, but we're missing a piece and we don't have yeah. a season to train them up. Uh, and they may trade one of their best youngsters for a finals veteran just for that finals run. And if the club thinks it's worth it and they'll get a grand final ring out of it, it's worth it. That'll happen mid-season, whereas when players are looking after themselves to sign their contracts, that would be a free agency period, yeah, mid-season, okay. end-season. So it's not happening. Literally, I'm playing for South Sydney Friday night. I sign for the Dragons on Sunday for next year, but I play with the Rabbitohs for the rest of the year. And you're like, sweet. Yeah. yeah. I'm, one of, I'm one of those people that's like a... An old romantic for one club players, which I think we will very rarely see anymore. You can't do that anymore. I, just, I love it, man. Right Unless you take unders. Are, oh, yeah. you can if you're not a if and if you do. play for a club that's not a powerhouse club for your whole career. You can do it because you'll probably never get a premiership yeah, it, or it, origin money consistently, so your salary doesn't go up too high. Well, it, so if you want to be a one club player, play for the Tigers. It's I'm rare. One of those old romantics, man. Like I'm. 29, and I've played for two clubs in my entire life. Oh, you traitor. Just tra- that's it. Like, And that was a big change for me. And like, okay. those old school... <laughs> no, was it? No, it wasn't. So I could tell you the story about how Robert changed. I was drunk and bra- <laughs> Brody It wasn't hard, that hard Brady to get poached me. <laughs> <laughs> We are at the pub one night. I just poked him all night and went, Oh, come oh, play for Palmer. Come play for Palmer. 
and then the next Tuesday he rocked up. So it wasn't that hard for him to change. That's not what happened. If you're going to tell the story to it correctly, <laughs> you had just turned 18. You wouldn't leave me alone. I told you if you could do four kryptonites in a row, I'd come play for Palmwoods. You did four kryptonites, passed out on the bar. Your sister, who was working at the bar, yelled at me. And I thought, you know what? This team doesn't seem too bad. Might come and check the boys yeah. out. Super hard. And on... On that bombshell of a star player <laughs> signing, <laughs> we'll wrap up this episode at six again. Um, Next week is our first season preview episode. We're going to be starting to do our Team One predicted list. That'll obviously change after the trials, but we do have a special guest coming back on the show. Jamie Soward will be with us next week. So we'll be recording on the Thursday night. Um, and releasing Friday morning. So he's going to help us break down a couple of teams, give us his predicted round one teams, and we'll talk about the decisions and predictions for the season ahead. All right. Uh, anything else from you, Jared? No, nah, just, just so everyone does know, next week's episode will not Thank be you dropping for tuning on Thursday. It'll be dropping again. on the Friday. Connect with the Did show on Twitter, that? Instagram, and the 6 no, no. website. Awesome. All nah, links in the show's bio. Be sure I'll to edit check that out Adam's part out. Craft yeah. Beer Choice uh, of the Week. Yeah.